We're standing in the historic lobby of the Reliance Building. It was built in two stages between 1891 and 1895, and it actually represents the transition of architecture in Chicago between the brown decades before the 1893 Columbian Exposition and the white city that was represented by the Columbian Exposition. The architects originally were Burnham and Root. John Wellburn Root was the design partner, and he designed the storefronts in 1891 that were built in the brown granite and bronze. But he died in 1891 before the rest of the building was complete. The upper floors of the old building had tenants with long-term leases, and that part could not be demolished until after those leases expired in 1895. By that time, Root had died, and so Charles Atwood, who Burnham had brought on as a design partner, was responsible for the design and construction of the tower portion, which is the creamy colored terracotta. And we also believe that he was responsible for the Gothic Revival detailing that we see in the terracotta details. We don't have any original drawings or documentation of what the design was of the tower that Root may have uh, created. So we think that it was Atwood that was responsible for the design of the tower. The restoration of the exterior involved the replacement of approximately 2,000 pieces of terracotta. We also replaced the windows with new wood windows that matched the original. The cornice also had to be replaced. It had been removed in the 1930s, but we had good documentation of what that looked like. But instead of replacing that with new terracotta, which would be very expensive and also quite heavy, terracotta is quite heavy, instead we used a cast aluminum in larger sheets that was easier to install and the overall weight was much lighter. But we had good documentation to match the details and it is painted in the same cream color as the terracotta so that it looks from the ground especially just like the original would have. The Reliance Building is famous for its Chicago windows. A Chicago window has a center fixed pane of glass and is flanked by two double hung windows on each side. The double hung windows can be opened to allow natural ventilation, but the fixed pane of glass allows lots of natural light into the building. This was important in the 1890s before the advent of modern electricity and electric lighting, and certainly before air conditioning, so everything had to be lit and ventilated naturally. The storefronts were accurately restored using the documentation we had. We did make a few changes to accommodate the hotel use, such as the new entrance on Washington Street, but the State Street entry into the historic lobby is an accurate restoration. We were able to reproduce the bronze elements, and they are in bronze. They've been patinated to look like they are older, and the new granite matches the old. We've made a few technical changes to things like the details of the windows in order to meet new modern codes. The historic elevator lobby where I'm standing was accurately recreated using historic photographs, historic drawings, and even some fragments of elements that were still here. However, nothing original remained in this space that we could reuse because it was significantly altered over the course of many decades. The stair over my shoulder is a recreation using casting elements from the historic stair that is on the upper floors. That stair is cast iron, but in this case we were able to make molds using cast aluminum to recreate that in a cheaper material and it's easier to work with. The elevator lobby over my other shoulder was also recreated using historic photographs and historic drawings. We were able to reproduce the grill work very accurately, but of course for modern codes we have to enclose the elevators themselves, and so we put a solid wall behind the grill and used a colored textured wall covering to give the sense of light and openness that would have originally been in this space with light filtering down from a skylight at the top of the elevators originally. Recreating the marble was quite a challenge. We only had black and white photos, and we had some names on the drawings, but finding a match for that historic marble is quite challenging. 
we had a sense that the red marble, which was labeled as French griot, was a red and white or gray cloudy mix and we were able to find something that we felt was a good match in the tone and texture against the historic black and white photographs. The white marble with this sort of inky stains on it was known as a Pavanazzo marble, but it was mislabeled on the historic drawings and didn't match anything that currently exists. We searched for matching styles or colors and weren't finding anything until finally sort of an old time marble guy said he thought he knew of a quarry in Italy where this might have come from. The quarry was closed, but there were still blocks of marble sitting around and indeed it matched and there was just enough of that to use for this project with a very thin margin of error. The mosaic floor was a particular challenge because although it showed up in some of the historic photographs, we couldn't tell what color it was and we really couldn't identify the pattern well. Thankfully, we found fragments of it buried underneath about three inches of later edition of terrazzo floors and the fragments allowed us to know the colors and the exact pattern. We were able then to reproduce that in new mosaic that was made in Turkey and sent to the United States in large sheets that was like a jigsaw puzzle that we laid out onto the floor and then once it was laid out, everything was grouted and it looks great now. We're standing on the 14th floor, one of the historic corridors in the building that we were able to preserve and restore. It features original marble, mahogany woodwork, doors and windows, and over my shoulder, one of the original historic cast iron stairs. So the original cast iron stair you see extends from the top floor all the way down to the historic elevator lobby we saw before. Now, we were able to keep this open because we added two new enclosed fire stairs, and this now has fire sprinklers and emergency lighting that allows us to meet code and still maintain the openness that we desired for the historic corridors. The restoration of the upper floors included the adaption of new hotel rooms, which we were able to put in the old offices, but the original glazed openings and doors we were able to maintain by putting new walls behind the glass and back painting the glass so that the corridor looks original and historic. 